When analyzing frictional forces on collar bearings, pivot bearings, and disc, it can be a little daunting, but knowing these equations, which is what we're going over in this video, knowing those can help you out a lot and it won't be so hard. So what we need to start off with is kind of understanding what pivot bearings and collar bearings and well, we know what discs are, but um, a collar bearing is, we've got a side view here of one, and it is a axle or a rod with a disc around it. And that disc is in contact with a surface. And that um, rod might be, is going through a hole of some sort. And there will be contact points between the edge of the collar and the hole that it is going through. And so we are analyzing the frictional forces between um, the edge of that collar and the edge of the hole. And that's why we have two radiuses involved in this equation. And so this equation goes over collar bearings and we have this equation that covers pivot bearings and discs. Now pivot bearing is a bearing where the, um, the rod or the axle is just sitting in the end of the hole. But the edges of the axle or the rod aren't touching anything. There, there's no frictional forces there, it's just on the end of the rod. And the same with this, the, um, the sides of the axle or the rod aren't touching the edges of a hole. So there's no frictional forces involved there. It's just against the end of the rod or on the collar, depending on which one you're using. So this one's a, little, a lot more simple because there's only one radius involved and then the rest of the variables are all the same. So the M, the moment, is the moment required to overcome these frictional forces created in the end of the rod or on the collar of the collar bearing. P is the axial load on the rod and an axial load, if you don't know, is the force that is in line with the rod pushing it either one way or the other. And so say if my arm was the rod, it could only push my arm this way or this way, and it's just in line with my arm. So that's an axial load, and that's what P is. It's pushing down on it and really causing those normal forces in the surface, which creates the friction. And so the last one we have is mu, and that is the coefficient of static or kinetic friction. It's static if there is no motion, but there's impending motion, and it is kinetic if that um, axle is actually rotating. So you click on this video link to go to one example problem where I go over um, an example involving collar bearings and I go through the equation and everything. And the second video link involves an example problem with a disc. And you click on this video link to go there. And I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit that like button. If you have any questions or suggestions, you leave them down in the comments and I will reply to them. Down in the description, I've got some links to Amazon and Teespring where you can buy some merch from student engineering like this shirt. And I've put the student engineering logo on shirts, hoodies, mugs, stickers, and other things, and buying that helps me a lot. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer, student engineering, and my goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So if you found this video helpful, hit that like button, and please subscribe.